Welcome back and a big thank you to our digital and smart talk series sponsor, Autodesk. For this next session with Autodesk, we have a really exciting presentation on the future of making, enabling a rapid industry innovation across design and construction for buildings and infrastructure. A very warm welcome to Salim al the Regional Industry Manager for Architecture, Engineering and Construction for the Middle East at Autodesk. Salim has been with Autodesk for the last eight years, where he has been spearheading and leading a team that drives digital transformation for major AEC organizations in the Middle East. Over to you, Salim. Good afternoon, uh, Laura, and thank you for the intro. Hi, everyone. I hope you are enjoying uh, the conference so far. It's a great pleasure for me to be speaking to you today. Uh, let me introduce myself again. So my name is Salim Perth, and I'm the Regional Industry Manager for Autodesk. I've been with the company for the last eight years. I've been with the industry in the industry for the last 20 years, serving customers and helping them with their digital transformation journey. In the next 20 minutes or so, I'll be showcasing some of the technologies and innovations that are reshaping the architectural engineering and construction sector. I would like first to share with you a snapshot about a report which was recently published by Statista Calculation that shows the amount and value of projects that need to be built from the building's perspective and from infrastructure perspective to be able to meet the growing population on our planet, which is estimated to be 10 billion by 2050. So in order to meet the requirements and the needs for this growing population, we will need to build roughly 3,000 kilometers of roads and highway every day and more than 13,000 buildings, which means there's a great amount of work that needs to be done. This also tells us that more is inevitable. We need to build more roads, we need to build more uh, hospitals, we need to build more schools, we need to maintain our existing infrastructure and our existing buildings and all other projects that we uh, will live through. Uh, at the same time, we need to make sure we understand that the construction industry is one of the most inefficient industries that will create uh, more than one third of the global waste. To give you an example, 75% uh, of uh, the spare parts which are manufactured are never used. So we, we are using the manufacturing uh, capabilities and all the resources to transport those spare parts, for example, and the storage facility, yet 75% of those items are never used. Which leave us with something which we need to live with, that less is a reality. So we have less resources, less material, even if we're speaking of the construction sector, we have less of the educated uh, resources or the manpower that needs to be delivering those jobs. At the same time, we need to deliver those projects and leave less impact on our planet Earth. As Autodesk, we make software that help uh, people to design, uh, better design and resolve all those challenges on a daily basis. We help architects to design the buildings and help the contractors to build those buildings at a later stage. We help uh, mechanical engineers to design cars and at a later stage, the manufacturer to build them. So our industry, uh, we've been into the automation industry for the last 35 uh, years. And this is not something new to Autodesk. So as Autodesk, we believe that to be able to do more with less resources, this will create an opportunity for us to do better, an opportunity for us to automate many of the tasks that we need to do. This will create lots of challenges and definitely this will create lots of opportunities for those companies that are ready to embrace change. I'll be highlighting in my presentation some of those technology innovations which will help you to do more with less in a better way. Before we get there, I just wanted to share with you some insights from a, a recently published report by Twilio, which is a leading cloud communication and customer engagement platform that surveyed more than 2,000 enterprises across the world to see about the uh, impact of uh, COVID-19 on the digital uh, engagement. And this report is available. I can share with you a link about it 
during the Q&A session after uh, this presentation. So despite all the tragedies that COVID-19 has caused, there's always a ray of hope. So for the last 20 plus years, companies have been through digital transformation. And those digital transformation, uh, they could take somewhere between a year to 10 years to be achieved. And then COVID hit. And those companies needed to do whatever they were doing in one to 10 years and literally days and weeks. So this has really sped up drastically the digital transformation across many industries. So the report uh, showcased uh, how this has impacted the digital acceleration across multiple industries. And when asked how COVID-19, uh, whether, whether COVID-19 has sped up digital transformation in the organization, 97% reported that yes, it has sped up their digital transformation journey. And 68% of them say that, that it has uh, transformed or sped up their digital transformation a great deal. Also, when asked about how many years do they think uh, this COVID-19 has accelerated the schedule for the digital transformation journey, the majority of the answers were around six years. This is really phenomenal. COVID-19 has no doubt impacted the way each and every one of us work. Millions of, millions of people want to return now to the workplace. Our customers want to help their client to return to the workplace. Hence, we have supported our customers by providing them with a COVID-19 resource center that shares best practices and share with them some of the utilities that they can use to support their clients go to work in a COVID-19 compliant manners. We have created community pages also to connect designers and engineers and businesses so that they'll be able to provide all the support required during those tough times. Our, our main objective is to keep engineers and designers connected despite all the challenges and to make sure that the jobs on site is happening and the workers and the teams there are resilient. Challenges have always led to innovation and this challenge is no different. By pairing human ingenuity with powerful technology, we can reimagine how we work, learn and play. I mean, most of you will be familiar with our uh, with Autodesk Revit authoring tools, which is the leading BIM software, multidiscipline for architecture, structural and engineering uh, practices that will allow them to design a 3D environment and get all the benefit uh, that BIM uh, offers. When COVID-19 hit, we developed on top of our uh, Autodesk Revit some tools leveraging generative design to allow for the ability for designers to design COVID-19 compliant uh, offices and, uh, and designs. So we've leveraged the infinite computing capabilities of the cloud to allow to set the constraints that you want to design within, put the parameters that you want to put in your design criteria, make sure that your designs are COVID-19 uh, compliant with all the restrictions that that will impose and have the better uh, layout for your desks, for example, in your environment. So the generative design capabilities of Revit will allow you to have multiple options, hundreds of options that you can narrow down into the option that will be more suitable for you. So you can, the, the op, you can have multiple options and then you will see that which one will be more suitable for you, which one will meet your criteria and will meet the uh, COVID-19 uh, restrictions and so on, all without the need to move any desks in your Revit environment. So all of this has been automated to help designers design offices for their clients, for them to return to work safely. Also, many of you may be familiar with our InfraWorks offering, which is our design tool for infrastructure, for road bridges uh, and utilities and so on. On top of it, we've added the mobility simulation, which will allow you to simulate the movement of uh, people, whether in uh, airports or in uh, hotels or hospitals and so on, and make sure that they are in compliant with the COVID-19 restrictions. So this has been quite useful, and this has helped many organizations in their uh, design uh, 
redesigning of their workflows and their uh, offices or the project that they need to design to be COVID-19 compliant. In addition to this, we have our computational fluid dynamics, which will allow you also to simulate airflow in uh, spaces and understand the impact of the virus transmission in specific areas. So those existing 3D models can be leveraged to address the airflow safety concerns. So you can compare between multiple scenarios and see which scenario will be more suitable for the design layout that you have selected and then check the impact of the uh, airflow simulation on that and select the option which will be more suitable for uh, your designs. Moving now into some of those certain technologies that I was talking about, and I'll start with generative design, which is really shaping now the way architectural engineering and contractors are doing their work. I will start with an example from Japan, where Daiwa House started using generative design for a number of years now. Traditionally, a designer drove a piece of software to design by deciding on all the aspects of his design, from shape to dimension, to material. Then the designer would simulate the performance of his or her design. This is now changing. With the generative design capabilities, designers will be leveraging the power of the cloud to, to get hundreds of designs and hundreds of simulations, and then they will be uh, designing and optimizing the, the option which will be more suitable for them. As you may be aware, land in Japan is very expensive especially in Tokyo. And that's why uh, Daiwa House needed to get the option which will be more suitable for them and will bring more ROI or the best ROI for them. To be able to do this, they've leveraged the generative design capabilities and our authoring tools to get to the option which will be uh, not only meeting the regulations in the area where they're building in terms of setbacks, for example, or road edge requirements or parking allocation, but also to meet some of the soft criteria, such as the line of sight or the comfort of the occupants. And whereas one person can design one option and evaluate it, generative design capabilities allows to generate hundreds of those options in no time. And it, it will allow the designer to then look into those designs, explore those designs and select the ones that will be more suitable uh, for them and will provide them with the better ROI. Ultimately, it will be up to the human to look at those variation and pick the best one for their warehouse, the occupants, and eventually the broader community. Let's get closer to our region. And most of you are familiar with the Museum of the Future, which His Highness Sheikh Mohammed earlier last month has installed the final piece of, on its facade its facade. The building exterior is made of more than a thousand pieces that were manufactured by automated robotic arms and installed over the course of 18 months. The building speaks Arabic, as Sheikh Mohammed said, and it, and it combines our Arab authenticity with our global ambitions. Dubbed as one of the most complex buildings in the world by Autodesk, this 500 million dirham project uh, outer shell extends over more than 17,000 square meters and is covered with Arabic calligraphy, which is eliminated by solar powered LED lights at, at night. The calligraphy on the facade was designed by Emirati artist Mata bin Lahish and features quotes from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's uh, poetry. One of those quotes is We may not live for hundreds of years, but the products of our creativity can leave a legacy long after we're gone. Another one, which will be the future, belongs to those who can imagine it, design it, and execute it. The future does not wait. The future can be designed and can be built today. And while traditional museums display artifacts and masterpieces from the eras of the past, this museum will be featuring project, future projects with the aim of becoming a global attraction for inventors, entrepreneurs, and the general public to better understand what the future may hold. Although this building may not be the largest building in the world, but definitely it is one of the most complex projects that's currently under construction. It's basically a look into future building technology. 
big challenges faced during the design by Designers Bureau Hapol was how to take an organic form and then polygonize it. How do you reduce the facade elements, facade being the most expensive element in this project, and keeping the design intent of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and the architect Sean Killa. How do you reduce the weight to keep environmental impact to it is minimal? So to answer those questions, Bureau Hapol had to uh, create a structure model which is driven by three conflicting parameters to be optimized simultaneously. How can to reduce the number of structural nodes because more nodes means more fabrication cost? How can you reduce the structural weight because more structural weight means more material cost? And how you can stick as close as possible to the initial intent of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and uh, the architect Sean Killa? To be able to do that, and after nine generations of optimization, Bureau Hapol reached a design that was significantly better than their original, which was easier to construct with 40% less node, which was cost which would cost less with 30% less weight, and which is close enough to the original vision of the architect and designer Sheikh Mohammed. It's interesting to mention here that the structural 3D model was driven by the algorithm. There was no modeler building this structure. Speaking of 3D models here, and this is the complexity that they were able to generate. Designers and engineers from across 12 time zones, they were connected to the BIM model in Dubai through the cloud. Here are some slides that show the complexity of this project. It is also worth mentioning that during construction of this project, the whole process was digitized and personnel from the contractor, BAM, used mobile devices to access the design data through, through the cloud. Issues and set lists were created, shared and managed through uh, mobile devices. Not only this, Bureau Hapold have used also the virtual infinite computing capabilities of the cloud to simulate and per, uh, the performance of this building. One of those simulation was to simulate the flow of the crowds in the building after certain events. They ended up optimizing the location of the elevator based on the simulation results. Moving to another interesting uh, technology, which is really reshaping the way uh, designers and contractors are working, which is modular construction. Let me uh, tell you an interesting story from Marriott. And Marriott, you're all familiar with the brand. It is one of the largest hotel chain. Both their revenues and pipeline were increasing, especially pre-COVID. And Marriott had the bottleneck. They were, able, they were not able to meet the growing requirements for uh, the need for their rooms, and especially in the United States. The average hotel, to build now in the United States, it's taking longer than what it used to take in the past. One of the reasons is the aging workforce. This aging workforce is due to the fact that many of those jobs in construction are not being attractive to the young generation because they're considered dangerous and they're considered dirty. So six years ago, Marriott embarked on a journey to understand how modular construction can help uh, them deliver or build projects, their projects faster. So since 2014, they have built more than 30 low-rise modular properties. But then last year, they decided to go big. At 26th floor, the Nomad Hotel in Midtown Manhattan is certainly big. Its value will be around $600 million that Marriott is investing in. Upon completion, the Nomad Hotel will be the tallest building modular hotel in the world. But this is not about creating a big hotel. This will be a beacon for the construction for the new era that this is embarking us, uh, getting us into. And Marriott partnered with Skystone through their digital uh, modular construction journey. Skystone is a company 
that was small back in 2014, but their dreams were big. They design and make modules that are volumetric. This means modules then can be finished off in a factory, which is far away from the construction site with less material and less weight. Remember that we spoke about the extra waste that's being generated out of the construction, which is estimated to be one third of the waste globally. And by the way, when I say finished off, I mean completely fitted out with everything in it. All the needs that a hotel room in a hotel would uh, require. Skystone makes the module from steel frames, which make them highly configurable in the factories. Those factories are in remote locations. This one, for example, was in Poland. And if you think about modular construction for hotels, this makes lots of sense, not only for hotels, for schools as well, for hospitals, especially for projects that have repetitive patterns. And Skystone were able to scale up uh, modular construction by using lots of automation, which drove lots of efficiencies across the whole life cycle of their design and construction project. Skystone used Revit, Autodesk Revit, to be able to develop a libraries of parts that can be mixed and matched in a tool called KitConnect, which is based on another Autodesk technology, which is the Force technology, which is our cloud development platform. In KitConnect, you can assemble the parts into modules, just, last, just like Legos. So if a component like a window is swapped, for example, you will see that the material in Revit will be updated automatically and any change will propagate to other systems, ERP, for example. Or the common data platform that was used by uh, Skystone, which has been 360 to collaborate between Skystone and its supply chain to be able to share those documentation and being able to get the review done electronically through various uh, in, in, in the cloud. To meet their demands, Marriott is scaling up their invest in, in investment in modular, and similarly for Skystone, which have to develop this very interesting facilities in, in parallel. Those modular, those modules aren't constructed the way normal construction happens. They are manufactured. There's a factory, there's an assembly process, a supply chain to deliver material to the assembly line, and stringent quality control to ensure less waste less cost and less risk. This is a perfect example of the construction and manufacturing convergence. This is what Autodesk has been talking about for several years now. As construction professionals, now we can look at the manufacturing and see how we can adapt what they are doing well. And similarly for manufacturing, they will see and try to adapt what construction professionals have been doing well over the last years. So Skystone, they've let robots do what the robots are good at in terms of the dangerous job, in terms of the repetitive tasks, and they've let the human do what they're good at, which is the finishes, high-end finishes that require lots of expertise to make sure that they're delivering the best in class products. All 168 modules will be shipped from Poland to New York in a single container ship to the port of New York. They will then be trapped overnight, one by one, into a tight construction site on the, in, in Manhattan. The plot is very tight, and it will be very difficult to be able to build such a project with, such, with traditional methodologies. Each module will then arrive on site and then will be craned up to its place and will be connected to the building services like plumbing and electrical. Lots of, of the work will also be done on site, but now it will be done in a safer way and it will be done in a more predictable way and more leaner way. But what's the big picture? Why do companies like Skystone risk their fate on an emerging trend? What motivates Autodesk to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in tools that will enable the conversions of construction and manufacturing? As we all see, the AEC industry is changing. Are you ready to embrace this change? We spoke about generative design. We spoke about 
uh, modular construction. And those are among many other trends that are reshaping the way each and every one of us will be doing business for the coming years. That seemed impossible a couple of years ago, and now it will becoming more of the norm. My message today is to get ready to reimagine re the way we do things. To do so, we need three, three things. First, we need the tool set. And this is something that Autodesk is committed to continue delivering tools that will benefit you from those trends. So that's an easy thing to do. The other part is skill set. We are fortunate to be living in a country and a region that fosters innovation. There is no lack of talent in this event and in the region. Uh, so this is an easy thing as well. Finally, the hard bit is really to change the mindset. And this is the attitude of looking at an impossible task that nobody wants to touch and decide to solve it. Something like Tesla building a digital car or Marriott delivering the Nomad Hotel on time. Are you ready for the next impossible problem? Thank you for making us your partner in the pursuit of excellence and have a great day. This concludes my session and now we're open for q and I'm looking forward for your questions. Thank you. Another truly excellent session there, and I'm really delighted to be joined by Salim al Firk, the Regional Industry Manager for Architecture, Engineering and Construction for the Middle East at Autodesk, for our live Q&A on rapid industry innovation when it comes to design and construction. A very warm welcome to Salim. Thank you so much for being with us in that fantastic presentation there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, one thing which I'd like to emphasize once again that despite all the negativity that the COVID-19 uh, situation has brought into picture, I mean, we always see some positive aspects that are coming out of it. And some of them, as I mentioned in the presentation, is uh, speeding the digitization in many industries. And the construction industry is one of those industries where we are seeing lots of improvement and speeding up in the way the digitization has been through in the last, let's say, nine or, or 10 months so far and some of those innovative technologies that i've spoken about have really seen lots of uh, acceptance and adopted uh, uh, adoption within the construction industry it really is uh, the perfect time for transformation and innovation of course uh, so one of the, the first questions that's come in for you is what do you think is the biggest challenge implementing technology for the aec sector and what can autodesk do to help well, <laughs> I think uh, probably the last slide which I spoke about that talks about the two, the, the challenge, some of the challenges that are facing such trans digital transformation, which is the tool sets, the skill sets, and the mindsets. And I think, I mean, as I mentioned in the session, is the tool sets Autodesk can help with uh, the skill sets. There's a wealth of knowledge in the industry and so on. And it's just the change in the mindset that would really uh, help in making it success and as Autodesk since the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic has started we have created a, a, a resource site for our customers and connecting our customers to the whole ecosystem so they will be able to present their work they'll be able to share expertise they will be able to connect to suppliers to new uh, part of their ecosystem as well as for those who are laid over, for example, or laid off, sorry, uh, they will be able to continue learning and so on. So we've developed lots of learning materials for them. So they'll continue on developing their skills and so on. So I'd be more than happy to share uh, the link to the resource site on in the chat box and then get those who could benefit from it to make sure that they are uh, yeah, checking it. Yes, please do that. And I will make sure our attendees look out for that as well. Thank you so much. Our next question is, can you tell us more about diff the different kinds of software used in prefabrication and modular construction? How does Autodesk support this sector as well? So uh, this is definitely one of the sectors that's moving fast across globally and across the region. I mean, I, saw, I, saw, I spoke about us. I've spoken about an example in, with Marriott, but there are even many of the regional uh, examples here, like the Red Sea Development Company, for example, where uh, prefabrication and model construction is being used there. As Autodesk, there's a, let's say, a range of solutions that we offer, uh, starting with Revit, where is, we call it a library of kit will be developed so that those companies who are 
doing the design will take into consideration how this those design will be developed. And it's quite essential for the designers and the contractors to be able to have the modular construction and prefabrication mindset when they are doing their design and during the fabrication and during the, the construction as well. So definitely Revit would be a tool which will help in uh, systematically adding and, and, and uh, guiding the whole process. Uh, tools like BIM 360, for example, which could be uh, as well managing the whole uh, process of collaboration between the various stakeholders involved. And there are many other smaller tools which have been developed on top of our Forge platform that can help throughout the process of uh, reconstruction and, and model construction. We move on now to our next question. Autodesk is innovating exponentially and investing in the fantastic solutions we all use. But as end users, how do we keep up to date? This is a very good question. How do we keep up to date with the changes? And also, how do we, uh, how can we upskill our workforce as well? Yeah, I mean, this is, as I said, something which I will just share uh, in, in the chat box. So we've developed uh, lots of uh, learning materials that uh, companies can benefit from companies or even individuals can just log in and then keep on developing their skills so we've curated some learning paths so if you're an architect you just follow a certain path and then you get a uh, wealth of knowledge about what's new in the industry and how you can get some of our tools to support you in delivering your next projects in a better way Thank you. Uh, we move back to COVID and to our next question. Digital adoption has taken a quantum leap at both the organisational and industry levels due to uh, the, the recent pandemic. What can regional construction firms gain by adopting digital technologies? So digital technology have already helped many of the customers uh, in digitising their workflows and in allowing them to work in, I would say, in a very... Uh, streamlined manner even during COVID. I mean, we've recently published a customer success story with KEO, which is one of the leading consultants uh, in, in the region, What where because they've adopted uh, our cloud collaboration technology at an earlier stage pre-COVID, their transition to uh, work from home or work in a COVID compliant manner, for example, with a mixed environment or hybrid environment between people working from home and other working from the office, it was a lot easier for them and the transition was very smooth, for example, and they've achieved excellent results in terms of reducing uh, the times needed for uh, uh, the design review and the time and the way they connected their various design offices or their offices to the sites has also uh, drastically improved due to the adoption of the technology that they've used. What about those that don't have big budgets, though? How can they be convinced of the long term benefits for digital solutions? I mean, the companies should really look into the overall savings that digital technology will bring into the picture. So it's not just, an, uh, they shouldn't just look at it as an investment in software. I mean, there's lots of tangible and intangible benefits which could be achieved as a result of uh, uh, implementing such technologies. They will be faster to respond to queries, for example. They will be uh, having a much better collaboration between the various stakeholders involved uh, in the project execution, uh, definitely they will be able to deliver faster. I mean, technologies like uh, modular construction or also industries like modular construction and prefabrication can definitely deliver better quality in a more controlled environment and with less uh, uh, resources wasted or less, less wasted and so on. So if you look at the overall picture, at the big picture, definitely there are huge savings which could be achieved as part of the transition to a digital uh, environment. Yeah, I suppose uh, companies just got to look long term sort of short term, of course. Uh, we go back to the pandemic now. Could the pandemic present an opportunity, do you think, for the construction industry to redefine the way it delivers projects? I mean, since the pandemic has started, we are seeing uh, that the mentality of many of owners, consultants, and contractors have changed a lot. So many of those who were against uh, the move to the cloud, we saw them rushing into uh, our cloud offering to see how our cloud solution could, for example, help them in maintaining their uh, business continuity. And I think this was quite essential in this, and it's really helped in terms of getting the right, to, the right uh, information to the right people at the right time. So, I mean, the the... A Twilio uh, survey that I showed earlier was a true example of how things have changed. So more than 90% of the people who were uh, interviewed said that 
this pandemic has helped them with their with speeding up their digital transformation and things with you to take one year, two years or three years, they needed to develop solution for that in literally a couple of weeks. And such technologies in the construction sector will definitely help in digitizing the whole work, uh, workflow from the, the early start of the construction project all the way to operation and handover. Very interesting discussion. And thank you so much for being with us. Uh, for everyone watching, what are your key messages to them? What are the key takeaways uh, you would like them to, uh, to gain from uh, your presentation today? Uh, I mean, I would like to just emphasize on one of the slides that I have uh, started my presentation with, which is doing more uh, with less uh, resources. And the only way to do that is through automation and through some of those uh, te technology ad advancement that we spoke about. So as Autodesk, we are committed to support the whole ecosystem, the whole AEC, architectural engineering and construction ecosystem, for them to deliver more with less uh, resources and definitely with less impact on our planet Earth. Salam al thank you so much for joining us. Fantastic discussion there. Uh, thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you, Laura.